So um, there we go. Um, ben Gajewski has worked for Genesee Valley Conservancy for over the past 15 years. He has held the role of executive director for the past nine. He is responsible for a team of six staff, is overseeing a $5 million budget this year, and is ensuring proper stewardship on over 26,000 acres across seven counties. He is vice president of the New York State Advisory Council, and he also serves on the National Conservation Defense Advisory Council. During summer months, Ben enjoys lap swimming in Canisius Lake two to three times a week and completing an annual swim across and back the width of Canisius Lake. Welcome, Ben. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd throw in a little bit of my personal life there with uh, swimming in Canisius. You know, very uh, water quality is very important to me, not being a lake resident, but, um, you know, drinking the water certainly uh, from Geneseo, but also swimming there. And um, so keeping a, a clean, healthy lake is really important, uh, you know, personally for my recreation. So um, I'm pleased to be here today to talk a little bit about uh, Genesee Valley Conservancy, who we are and what we do as an organization. Uh, we are your local land conservancy. Um, we are a not-for-profit uh, working just in this region uh, to protect land, uh, really simply enough. Um, our office, for those of you who don't know, is on Main Street here in Geneseo. Um, and uh, we work really throughout the Genesee uh, River watershed is our service area. So we have a, a fairly large region, but it is, it is localized and it is watershed based. Um, tonight, I want to talk about who we are, uh, what we do, how we do it, um, but I'm also hoping to hear from uh, some of you all, um, especially that this is targeted towards, you know, the Lake Association and, and supporters of the lake. Um, we really want to learn about, you know, the lake watershed, what you want from us. Um, you know, we are a, a community-based organization. We don't want to come in and, and dictate what happens. We really want to be responsive and uh, serve different communities in different ways. Um, and so Canisius Lake is certainly a, a unique area. And um, if there are things we can do or add to our programming to assess your goals, um, I'd love to you know, hear that feedback tonight or uh, you know, potentially down the road. So I will share my contact uh, towards the end of the talk tonight. Um, okay, um, so just a, a little overview here. Um, Genesee Valley Conservancy, this is our, our service area. Um, generally, the, the Genesee River watershed south of Monroe County. Um, we protected over 26,000 acres of land in this area. We have about 12,000 acres in progress uh, right now. So we are doing a, a tremendous amount of work. Um, we have, Mary said six staff, we eight staff. We have a, a number of part-time folks. So it kind of depends on how you count it. Um, but we have uh, eight, eight different folks working um, with us to help get the work done. Um, tonight, we have two other meetings going on right now that our, our land conservationist, Matt Halliday, is, is taking over. So um, there's plenty going on and there's plenty of interest in our work. Um, we have projects in yeah, seven different counties. Um, we are overseen uh, as a nonprofit. We have a board of directors uh, by 22 um, folks on our board. So we have a fairly large board, um, but based on the amount of work that we're doing and the number of communities that we work in, um, we really need a large board to, to be able to accomplish this. Um, and we have a very broad uh, mission as, as a land conservancy. Um, we are looking to protect significant natural areas uh, and habitats. Um, we are looking to expand and buffer already conserved lands. So places that have been protected, say like Letchworth, trying to protect a buffer around areas like that. Uh, we have a very robust agricultural uh, conservation program that you've, you've probably heard about, um, protecting forest land. Um, you know, our board is, is uh, very good at saying yes and very bad at saying no. Um, anything that's related to uh, land conservation, any type of landscape, whether it's an ag field or a wetland, you know, they want to be able to protect it and, and preserve it. Um, the Genesee Valley is certainly a patchwork and a network of all kinds of different landscapes, uh, and, and they don't want to just uh, focus on one and ignore the others. They really see the, the interconnectedness being a really important part of what we do uh, as an organization. 
Um, one of the latest things that we've done on our most recent land conservation plan, uh, some of the planning work that we do to decide you know, where we're going to work and how we're going to work, um, we've added two kind of overarching principles to our work. Uh, one is climate considerations. Um, so any project that we do, we are thinking about uh, how that project fits into a changing climate. Um, what's going to happen on that property, but how that property can help maybe mitigate some climate uh, issues. Uh, and water quality is the second one. Uh, again, every project that we do, we're thinking about water quality, how the project plays into that, how it can help uh, you know, provide clean water in some manner. Uh, certainly when we're talking about Canisius Lake, uh, there's a very obvious direct connection towards drinking water, towards habitat. Um, but even if we're doing a, an ag project in the, the middle of the, the valley, there are you know, water quality implications. So our board is really recognizing that climate and water quality are, are big issues, um, going to be around for a long time, and we really need to start making sure every project fits into um, those considerations, uh, you know, in some extent. Um, for those, I know there's many of you on the call, I recognize you and as supporters, so thank you for that. Uh, for those of you who don't maybe know us, uh, this is the first time you're coming across us, just a few projects maybe that you're aware of. Uh, Indian Fort Nature Preserve is a property that we own uh, here in the town of Geneseo uh, off Route 63. Um, great waterfall there. Um, it's a property that we own as an organization and manage, uh, has access to the Genesee River, so kayakers, canoers use it. Uh, we have a few miles of hiking trails that we maintain on the property. Um, it's used year round, um, whether it's for snowshoeing or bird watching or taking a dog out for a walk. Um, the property is constantly uh, in, in use, which is, which is tremendous. Um, it also has cultural features. So the Haudenosaunee um, have their palisades on the property that were really uh, significant and actually what drew us to protecting this place. Um, a really unique feature that exists that we could protect, save these cultural features uh, while also protecting habitat and providing recreational uh, opportunities for the community. Um, so it has a nice kind of mix of different reasons of why we're involved. Um, and then in addition, we've partnered with SUNY Geneseo, other uh, local schools come out and do research, do class projects on this preserve. Um, so that is a, you know, another reason uh, behind doing a project like this. Uh, you may also have seen our, our farmland protection work. Um, that's gotten a lot of press lately. We've been very successful at this. Um, perhaps you've been seeing our green protected farmland signs popping up around Livingston and Wyoming counties. Um, on the left here is a photo of the high grow farm, which kind of overlooks Canisius Lake. So it's right over the tree line there. You can kind of get a sense that the, there's a gully there and the, the lakes uh, behind that. Um, so working to protect you know, some of our most productive high quality soils. Um, we've been able to tap into some state grant programs to help fund this work. Um, we've been very successful at that, thanks to partnerships with the counties and the towns around here, and then also just you know great farm families and, and really great exceptional soils. Um, you know when we're competing for grant funds, um, you know we're, our our farms stack up better than anyone else in the state, uh, which is why we've been able to bring a lot of funding here to uh, save a lot of farmland. So those are some of the things that. Um, you know, we have been working on, um, but I'll get into a little bit about the, the method and how we, how we do conservation. Um, so there's really two main tools that we use as an organization. Uh, the first is ownership. Uh, so like Indian Fort Nature Preserve, a, a property that we actually take on and own as an organization, just uh, like you would own a property as an individual. Um, the second is uh, what we call conservation easements. Um, a conservation easement is a legal tool that um, we can put on a property with a willing landowner. So it needs to be in cooperation with the landowner. Um, it will place restrictions on the property in terms of what can happen in the future uh, in the, with the purpose of protecting a certain natural resource. So maybe it's habitat, uh, maybe it's water quality, maybe it's farmland. Uh, the easement is tailored to a property to protect um, you know, some special natural feature of that land. Uh, but it remains privately owned. So we have two nice options here, uh, one where we take over ownership, another where it remains privately owned, um, and they work very well, and, and that's kind of the bulk of, of what we do as an organization is, is one or two, uh, or one or the other of these two options. So land ownership 
um, nature preserves, as, as we call them. Um, this photo here actually was just taken, I think, two weeks ago at Indian Fort Nature Preserve. So if you've ever been over there, you might be kind of surprised at this, but um, we've had such a cold uh, January that I was out there hiking one day, um, one of the coldest days of the year, I thought I would go out hike and be in total solitude. I came across four different groups. There was a mother and daughter snowshoeing. There was another couple out cross country skiing. And then there was this group ice climbing the falls. Um, some climbers who had experience and had tied some safety ropes up to trees and, and they were climbing up the falls. So it was a great use of, of this property that I didn't know existed until two weeks ago. Um, so the nature preserve like Indian Fort, um, we own the land. Um, we can either purchase it outright if we have uh, funding to buy property. Um, land can be donated to us, uh, can be left to us in somebody's will, uh, or we can purchase a property at a discount. So maybe there's a landowner who is willing to sell it to us, but they don't need full market value, but they need something and they can't just give it away. And so maybe we come up and negotiate a, a price to buy it, you know, half price or something like that. Um, so we, we end up owning the land outright. Um, and then as an organization, it's really us up to us to determine um, what we do with that property. Obviously, we're a conservation group, um, so we are going to be looking at the natural features of the property and thinking through how we want to manage it best for, uh, you know, the habitat, the water on that property. Um, we uh, have a stewardship committee that, that will review a property, walk it, look at what's there, uh, look at where there's room for improvement, um, and then we'll create a very specific management plan for that place. Um, so, you know, dealing with stream banks, dealing with forests, maybe removing invasive species, doing replanting projects, um, you know, any of that kind of work um, that we can really um, manage the day to day kind of uh, habitat on that property. We can be very specific about, OK, what branch are we cutting? Where are we planting this tree? Um, if we own it, we have kind of full, full say and full control over what goes on. Um, so that is a, a really good thing for very special, unique type of properties. Um, if we, we own land, the other uh, big advantage is that we can also open it up to the public. Um, we can ask, uh, you know, for folks to come on and, and use the property, take hikes. Uh, we can build a trail network out. And so generally, if we're protecting a property, we're also looking for places that are accessible, uh, that have some natural, uh, you know, scenic value that the public would enjoy whether it's a waterfall or a stream slide or just a really nice forest. Um, we want something that's accessible that people can get on the ground and, and enjoy, um, basically so we can offer you know, free access to nature. You don't have to drive maybe all the way to Letchworth. You don't have to pay an admittance fee to get in. Our preserves are open and, and free to the public. Um, and that's also a, a really important thing for our organization is to make sure we're making you know, nature uh, accessible to folks. So that's something we, we really hope um, to, to do with any nature preserve that we take on. Um, and um, we uh, take on nature preserves as kind of a special um, thing. We, we own five right now, um, two, two in Geneseo, one in Avon, two down in Wayland. Um, we really view these as kind of amb ambassador properties. Um, we're, we're not trying to you know, create a new Letchworth where we're owning you know, 10,000 acres of land and managing it. Um, we really want to own small pockets um, that are they're near where people live that have a really unique, really special uh, kind of resource. So we're very targeted. Um, nature preserves cost a lot of money. You know, if we're owning it and managing it, that means everything and anything that happens to that property, you know, we're responsible for. So carrying insurance, you know, developing the trail, even if we have volunteers helping us, we need somebody to manage the volunteers you know, set up the tasks, review their work, help, you know, give them direction. Um, so there's a lot that goes into preserve, but for those very special uh, gem type properties, uh, it's really worth it. And it's something that we uh, are, are very pleased to be able to offer for the community. So that's a, a real short, quick uh, overview of, of nature preserves. Um, the other tool that we use uh, in our work uh, is what we call a conservation easements. Um, these are, again, a legal tool. Um, we work with a willing landowner. So, you know, as a nonprofit, you know, we're not government. We can't come in and, and put this on somebody's property. Um, this has to be with a willing landowner who wants to protect their land, who wants to put these restrictions in place. Um, 
The benefits are that the property can remain privately owned. So in a place like the Genesee Valley, where there's a, a lot of working landscape, a lot of agricultural lands, this is a really great way for a community to permanently protect land, uh, but maintain its private ownership, maintain its productivity. Um, you know, we don't have capacity or interest to start farming land. So I don't really want to own a farm and have to go out and be planting crops and harvesting. Um, there are enough farmers in our region that uh, we view our, our role as protecting the land base and, you know, farmers will buy and sell that land uh, and take care of it themselves. Um, conservation easements are, are really tailored to the property we're protecting. Um, so restrictions that we put into those documents are generally to uh, limit the type of building that can happen, limit residential, commercial, industrial building on a property, uh, limit dumping, uh, limit signage and, and not allowing, you know, billboards to be put up by the road, really large, you know, obnoxious signs, um, maybe special use areas. So depending on if it's a wetland or a sensitive habitat um, or a farm, there may be areas that have more restrictions on a property and then areas that have less. Um, so if we're talking about a farm, um, that farm, we may kind of divide up in the easement so there is kind of the, the farmstead area where there's a, a house and the barns and silos and the things the farm needs to function. Um, the easement will allow for kind of improvements to those structures. Maybe they need to add the barn, you know, add some new outbuildings. Um, we'll designate an area where, where that's acceptable uh, and then designate the bulk of the property, the fields, you know, the, the majority of the land uh, will have much more restrictions on, on building and, and putting improvements. Uh, because we're trying to protect the soils, trying to keep them open and available for the current owners to farm, but then also future owners. Uh, and this is one of the nice uh, and important features of a conservation easement, uh, that these are permanent documents. So uh, we work with the landowner, we put a conservation easement on their farm, uh, that remains with the land. Um, it's still privately owned, they can still sell the land uh, to someone, they can still you know, leave it in their will to their children. Uh, whoever inherits that land or purchases that land will have the conservation easement and the same restrictions. Uh, and as an organization, this is why we exist to not only protect that property and place the conservation easement on it, uh, but to work with future generations of landowners. So if someone comes in and buys the farm, we educate them, make sure they understand the restrictions on the property and follow those. Uh, and we kind of keep the records up to date year to year to make sure things are being followed. And if there's issues, uh, you know, we, we, we deal with that. So it's a, it's a really nice tool. Um, importantly, it, it keeps land on the tax rolls. So, um, you know, we have done a lot of easement land. It's all still on the tax rolls. Landowners still pay taxes and contribute to our, our towns and schools, which is really valuable. Um, but we have kind of uh, taken away the, the uh, potential of strip malls and, and house lots and things popping up on uh, what are really either highly productive agricultural lands or sensitive wetlands, um, things like that. Um, easements also allow us to, uh, as I mentioned, designate some special areas. I'm thinking especially about Canisius Lake. Um, in an easement, we can designate not only a, a building area where, you know, barns or, or a house could go, um, we can also designate kind of riparian areas next to bodies of water or along a stream uh, so that farming practices and, and more intensive uses are buffered from uh, a gully or water um, to make sure that any soil or phosphorus from a farm has a, a place to be filtered and cleaned before it gets into that gully and floats down into the river. Um, so easements allow us to be very adaptive. There are some properties you know, if there's no direct water source, we don't need to do a special kind of buffer riparian area. Um, obviously, there's other properties then that, uh, you know, they farm up, the farm owns right up to the river, or they own right up to the creek, and we can put in special restrictions uh, to make sure the current farmer and future farmers maintain a proper, you know, grass, forested buffer, uh, whatever might be uh, appropriate. Um, so that is a, a really great, important way to again, mesh this very diverse landscape that we have um, of farming and forest land and water quality. Um, this is a tool that, that can be very adaptive to the type of property that we're working on. Um, 
Easements are a really nice way for our organization to protect a lot of open space. Um, you know, I am not out here having to mow down the field or plant trees or clean up trees that fall over. Um, you know, this is still privately owned, so it's still a landowner's responsibility to deal with kind of the day-to-day -day management of that land. Um, we are kind of involved looking at longer term uh, considerations. Uh, we do an annual checkup on every property that we've protected like this. Um, but I don't have to be involved every single day on every property. So we can protect a lot of acres. The landowners still kind of manage those every day. We do our annual checkup. Um, it's, a, it's a very cost-effective way to protect a lot of open space um, that provides scenic farmland habitat benefits without us owning you know, every acre in the valley. So it's a really, uh, really good tool and a really important tool that, that we can use um, to protect land. So that's a very, you know, very brief overview of, of conservation easements. I could go on for, for hours and hours. I don't think that's what anyone wants to hear, but if you do, I'm, I'm certainly happy to, uh, to talk to you more about that. Um, I also really wanted to ask, you know, what, what do you need? Um, we are talking about Canisius Lake uh, protecting water quality, obviously. Um, you know, we can own nature preserves, we can, you know, acquire maybe that gem parcel somewhere near the lake and provide lake access or protect a really important gully near the lake. Um, we can also do conservation easement work, protect the farms, the forests, you know, surrounding uh, Canisius Lake, working in the watershed and, and maybe protecting certain creeks and streams and corridors. Um, but there might be other things that we can offer as an organization. Um, you know, it's great that you have a really strong and vibrant uh, lake association here, um, doing you know educational program, both very specific to the lake and on other things in the region. Um, you know, there's a lot of towns involved. Obviously, Mary and the county have a great you know watershed coalition uh, working here, and so you know we want to add to that. We don't necessarily want to come in and, and do our own thing. We want to fit those plans. We want to help advance the you know, municipal planning that's taken place, the, the lake watershed uh, planning that has taken place and provide services where we can. Um, you know, we have a lot of expertise in land management um, and those related things. So you know, this, is, this is where we can help. Um, so certainly if there are you know, specifics, uh, questions, things we're happy to meet, I think we might be speaking at the, the annual meeting later this year. Um, so whether you're a landowner in the watershed and, and want to learn more about maybe what you can actually do on your property to help uh, make a difference, you know, we can, we can work with you on that. Uh, or maybe there's some other broader targeted, um, you know, approach that we can take. Um, the Conservancy has gotten into farmland protection in a big way, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, we've been very intentional about partnering with the county and the towns um, and, and kind of creating this program where we talk to farmers every year, educate them about conservation easements, they apply, we have a grant funding source that we've uh, learned about and can use successfully. And we would love to create something like that at Canisius Lake, uh, something where there is an annual program and there's some targeted goal, we find funding streams that will work uh, and really try to preserve uh, the, the lake water um, as it is, but then also try to improve it too. Um, you know, we. Uh, I'm sure you, most of you know better than I, the, the lake quality, I mean, it's, it's better than some lakes out there, certainly, um, and it's not a pristine lake. So, you know, we don't want it to get worse. So we can certainly do land protection in, in the hopes of maintaining where it is. Um, but then ideally, we also get to a point where we've done enough land protection, open space protection that uh, the water quality can start improving. Um, and, you know, open space, forest, riparian buffers, all of those things play into uh, naturally, you know, cleaning water and filtering water out. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, climate is a new thing we're thinking about with any project. Um, I think one of the, the main issues and concerns we're going to see in this region from a changing climate are larger storm events, larger rain events. You know, we're going to, going to get maybe the same amount of rain, but it's going to come in, in fewer and bigger events where we're going to get a lot more sediment running into the lake, a lot more phosphorus running into the lake. Um, so how we can mitigate those and kind of change our landscape to, uh, you know, be able to absorb that and, and slow that stuff down so we don't get six in inches of rain that flows straight into the lake and, and you know, pollutes it and kills everything. Um, so we're really trying to think through how can we, you know, adapt to some of those changes that, that have already started but are, are you know, predicted to get a, a lot worse. Um, 
So I, I will open this up in a, in a minute or two to just questions and comments, but um, we certainly want to, you know, work with the Lake Association here and, and landowners in the surrounding area uh, to achieve your goals. Um, you know, that's, that's why we exist. We're a community-based organization. Uh, as, a, as a nonprofit, um, you know, we are not municipality. Um, we're not, you know, uh, funded through, through the government, through taxes. Um, we rely on community support. So, you know, if you're not a landowner and, and can't make that decision to protect your land or to add a buffer to your, your creek side, um, you know, financial support is what allows us to have staff in the office to talk to landowners, to talk to groups like you, um, and to apply for grants and apply for funding that's out there. Um, you know, there's a lot of money out there for doing conservation, but it doesn't do any good if you don't have someone to actually, you know, fill those things out and learn how the programs work. So, um, certainly would welcome your support. Um, a number of you on the call are, are supporters of the Conservancy already, so just thank you uh, for what you do. I mean, that keeps literally the lights on tonight and, and uh, me in the office. So that's a huge part of, uh, you know, keeping our organization going. Uh, lastly, here, my last slide, at least. Um, my information, so my, my email's on there. Um, our office, I said, is, is on Main Street in Geneseo. Um, you know, generally somebody's in the office, you want to stop by, that's terrific. Um, our, our mailing address is there, but I'd really direct you to our website. Um, we have uh, recently updated our website. So a lot of great stories on there of our projects uh, that we've done recently. All of our nature preserves uh, have pages on there with directions on how to get to them. Um, but also there's, uh, you know, information about farmland protection and, and other work that we do. Um, and uh, my contact, my staff's contact information is all on the website, so you can reach out and, um, you know, ask questions or, or share ideas, uh, anything like that that you have. So that is a, a lot of information really fast. Um, it's a brief overview of, you know, who we are as an organization, what we do. Um, we've been around in the Genesee Valley for 30 years now. Um, 31, 32 years. I, the last couple of years, I'm not sure how to count. Um, so we've been around for a long time. We've done a lot of conservation work, uh, but there's still a lot more to be done. And I think one of the, you know, the main things I think of and what gets me into work every day is, you know, once land's lost, it's, it's really lost forever. Once it gets paved over, once the forest gets cut down, you know, you're very unlikely to get those natural benefits back. Um, so we really want to work uh, as fast and, and as hard as we can to save you know, the places in the Genesee Valley that, that need to be saved. Um, so uh, with that, I think I will um, pause here and, and maybe Mary, I don't know if there are questions or comments, but I'm happy to kind of open it up or let you throw some questions at me. I can read some questions for you in the chat, Ben. Uh, first one, uh, do conservation easements have provisions for solar installations? Yeah, so um, that's one of those uh, uh, things that will be dictated by a property and what we're trying to protect. Um, so generally, if we're doing a, a project, uh, solar is going to be at least limited. Um, if we're trying to save a farm or forest, um, covering it with solar is not going to, uh, you know, advance the, the conservation values of the natural land. Um, but it can potentially assist. So if it's a farm, it may be limited to a certain percentage. So maybe, you know, maybe you can build one acre of solar uh, to support the farm, the farm operation, help, you know, the farmers uh, cover their bills, but preserving, you know, 98% of the land base for actual farming. Um, so that will vary kind of based on the property and is, is if it's appropriate or not to have a solar field, um, but it would be smaller, you know, uh, more on-site use base than a commercial large-scale solar. So yeah, that's a great question. Thanks, Ben. The next question about property tax implications um, under two different conditions. If, the con if it's conservancy owned uh, property and then if the easement is with a current owner. Yep, um, great question. So uh, in terms of if the conservancy owns a property and we have a nature preserve, uh, our practice is to uh, get a tax exemption for the property. Um, you know, that's, that's in line with state law, but we are, you know, we view it as we're opening this property up to the public. We're basically creating a park, you know, that's not being managed by the town or the village. You know, we're doing that, investing time and money into the property. And um, so that's, you know, providing a, a very direct community benefit. So 
own land, we take off the tax rolls uh, for that reason. Uh, if land is in a conservation easement, um, it is still on the tax rolls and it's still taxed. Um, taxes are, are based on the assessment, which is the current land use. So, um, you know, easements don't necessarily affect the, the property taxes that somebody pays. There are some, and I'm not sure if this is quite where the, the question was getting at, um, but I think it was, yeah, property tax based. But uh, if a landowner donates a conservation easement to us, uh, there can be um, income tax um, implications for that. It's, a, it's, it's like a charitable donation. So if you are putting an easement on your property, you're giving up the right to build, you know, 10 homes or whatever. So there's some financial loss that you might see. Uh, and that's similar to as if you wrote me a check to, you know, to the conservancy for X amount of dollars. Um, so that's an income tax deduction, but you're still paying local property taxes, um, which if you're a landowner trying to do an easement, you're going to be disappointed in. And if you're a member of the community, you're going to be really glad that land is protected and, uh, you know, they're still paying tax and contributing to, to the local uh, services that we have. Thanks, Ben. Next question. Is there a size limit to the plot of land that can go into a conservation easement? Yeah, so um, there isn't any uh, hard and fast rule on size. Um, certainly for our organization, you know, we're working throughout the entire watershed. Um, there's a certain amount of steps that go into an easement, no matter if it's an acre or a thousand acres. So if I can protect a thousand acres, that's, you know, a better use of my time. Uh, but depending on what, uh, depending on what we're trying to protect, um, a small, you know, we have a few five, eight acre easements um, because of the resource we're protecting or where it's located, it makes sense. Um, we also have easements that are a thousand acres. Um, so, you know, we would love to protect more whenever we can, but depending on um, what we're trying to do, um, smaller ones, you know, may be really important. Thanks, Ben. Uh, next question, are easements reversible if property is sold? So easements are not, uh, not the kind of easements that we do. Um, they are permanent. Um, so they run with the land. We actually take and, and own those rights. Um, and um, the only way that easements can kind of be undone is if uh, the property goes through an eminent domain proceeding, you know, the state, federal government, they can do whatever they want. Um, the easement certainly will be a hurdle to them and, and another thing they have to sort of get through if they're trying to expand the, the school or build an airport, whatever it is, um, they're gonna have to do some extra arguing that they can come and take your land if it's also protected with an easement uh, and, and try to justify why you know, impacting this resource is worth it. Um, but no, easements are permanent and therefore it's something that our organization is very careful about doing. Um, we won't do an easement on any property anywhere. Um, you know, we need a willing landowner, but we also look at, you know, the town, the county, what are their goals? Do they have uh, plans in place that are either saying this area should be protected or maybe they have plans saying this is the place we want to see development go in the community. So we're always trying to look uh, far into the future and, and determine is this place worth protecting forever? Um, if the answer is no, then, you know, we back away from a project, but if it's worth permanent protection, um, then, then an easement's a great tool. And the next question, do you know offhand how many acres are protected in the watershed? Uh, that is a good question that I don't know. Um, we've protected 26,000 some acres. Um, and yeah, I need to look at that uh, and figure that out because there's a lot of state land protected. There's other types of, uh, you know, ownership, uh, you know, county owns land, things like that. Um, so that's something I, I should sort of figure out and, and track someday, but I don't have that for you, Jean. And, yeah, nice mapping project. Um, then can we uh, jump off of Jean's question and ask, um, can you describe some of the projects that you have or the lands that you have protected in the watershed? Has there been a couple of specific uh, projects that we've heard about? Yeah, just some of our recent work. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, so uh, one of our latest uh, land protection projects that's actually really quite exciting uh, down in Wayland, um, we uh, were donated a 20 acre piece of land um, in Wayland just outside of Dansville. 
Um, this is a property that has been used by the public kind of informally for decades. Um, the, the New York Times had written stories about this place twice um, back in the 40s or 50s. So it has had some you know, notoriety back before there was an internet to, to look up and find places like this. Um, so it's a really important kind of recreational place for the, the Dansville Wayland community. Um, but it also has some really tremendous uh, environmental resources. So it, it has um, uh, Little Mill Creek that crosses the property, which is the drinking water source for the village of Dansville. Um, so that crosses the land, all the water going there is, is going downstream into the, the intake pipe. Um, so really important to protect for that community. Um, you know, we can, we can put chemicals in, we can pay to treat water and, and make it clean if it's all muddied up. Um, but it's a whole lot cheaper and, and probably a whole lot healthier if the water stays clean from the get-go. Um, and then this property also has a, a beautiful hemlock forest, um, just a tremendous forest to walk in and be in, um, which is unfortunately being threatened by an, an invasive species, the hemlock woolly adelgid. Um, so you may have heard of that. Um, it's, a, it's a little adelgid species that will suck sap out of the needles, um, making the needles fall off the tree and eventually killing the tree because it cannot you know, do its natural processes. Um, so it's under threat. It's, if the hemlocks are lost, the stream's gonna be exposed to more sunlight. It's gonna warm up. Uh, the trout that are in the stream are gonna die off. The, the water quality will degrade. The water treatment plant downstream is gonna have to do more work to maintain that. Um, so that's a really uh, exciting project for a lot of reasons. Uh, we just took ownership of that in November. Um, we, we have, uh, it's up on our website. You can go visit it. Um, it is open, you know, to the public. We're, we're working on some finalized management plans and, and, uh, what exactly we're going to do down there, but it's a beautiful spot. And, um, again, it's, it's thanks to a, a landowner who was very generous to donate, uh, a property she had owned for 40 years, um, kind of realizing that she was getting a little bit older, that the community really loved this place. And I mean, it is stunning. It is, um, it's, it's unlike anything I've seen, you know, anywhere in the Genesee uh, River watershed, honestly. It looks like downtown Ithaca or something, um, just the waterfalls and the creek. Um, so it's, it's one of those really exceptional places that, you know, yes, we want to own this. We want to be very specific in how we, how we control that property. Um, so that's our, our latest one. And I'm always most excited about our, our latest, most recent project, just because it's the one we're figuring out and we're, we're introducing people to, meeting neighbors, taking walks out there, talking to experts. I was out there last week uh, talking to a, a woman from Cornell about the hemlocks and, and how, to, uh, how to attack this hemlock woolly adelgid and, and you know, which trees we should be saving first. Um, and so that's a, a tremendously exciting thing to do. And just to know the impact that's gonna have on the community you know, decades from now, um, we took that project to, you know, we went to the, the Wayland or the village of uh, Dansville board, um, you know, asked them if that was something we should be taking ownership of, you know, what they thought about that becoming a preserve in the community. And, uh, you know, the mayor said, oh, I remember going there when I was a kid. And, and it was one of those places that just, it means so much to people. And it's, it's only 20 acres. It's not going to, you know, change the world in terms of conservation locally. Um, but it has a lot of impacts and a lot of meaning. So it's, uh, it's one of those places that's an absolute, you know, place for us to be and, and us to be working. So besides trying to figure out uh, the management plan for that, I'm also, uh, you know, looking for the next one. You know, where is the next place like that hidden in some community somewhere that uh, we can be a part of and, and really make a difference for the future. Thank you, Ben. This would be a good opportunity um, that was our last formal question. Um, this would be a good opportunity for folks to unmute themselves if they have a direct question for Ben. And I would also like to um, point out that one of the primary reasons that Ben is joining us this evening is because the CLA has asked uh, for this presentation. They actually started talking about it about a couple years ago, um, looking at conservation uh, happening in other lakes. And they said, you know what, we really should be doing a a little bit more here. Um, it was on their wish list. So does anybody have any other questions that they would like to ask? You can hold your spades bar down and speak. Ben? Uh, we uh, yeah, have so see a uh, question here from April. 
Uh, does the conservancy reach out to farmers around Canisius Lake? Um, so we, um, we don't reach out specifically into the lake area, um, although we have talked about that. There is you know, some potential conflict between protecting farmland in the lake watershed. So if we do farmland projects in the watershed, we wanna make sure we have the riparian buffer areas and things as part of those projects where we might not worry about that if it's uh, you know, further away you know, in the flats somewhere else that's more farmland. Um, but actually right now um, we are, we do kind of do a broad open um, uh, request to farmers. So uh, there are workshops scheduled in Livingston and Wyoming counties um, end of this month or beginning of next month uh, to learn about conservation easements, to learn about the farmland protection program. Um, and so we're you know, certainly putting a broad appeal out to farmers who might be interested in protecting their land to, to talk to them about that. Um, but I would love to do a project in the watershed and to be able to merge these two, you know, really good soils, good farmland with also protecting lake quality and making sure, you know, we're, we're farming appropriately in the watershed. I just know um, in the town of Geneseo, Ben, um, and especially right outside the village, there have been farmers or it's the same farmer who has cleared a lot of land. Um, it's not necessarily going into the lake, but it is going into Jaycox Creek now more so than before um, yep. and, and ending up in our river. So yes. that's that's why I was asking. Yeah. And that is um, I mean, it's a, it's a good question. And it's also a, a tough thing sometimes for us to deal with. Um, you know, easement conservation easements in particular, we can put certain restrictions on a property. But we also have to be realistic about what we can control. Um, you know, I can't be on every conservation property every single day. So, you know, we can't control 100% of things that happen on a property, say like a farm. Um, so maybe if we were running a farm, we would do, you know, practices one through 100, we would do them all perfectly, you know, conservation being our only mission. Um, but if it's still privately owned, a farmer still making their land management decisions, there's just kind of a compromise there of, okay, what are we permanently trying to protect? And then what we just can't do because we don't have the capacity to be out there, you know, watching their every move. Um, and so easements are always kind of a debate of that gray area of, okay, how much can we actually do? How much is it sort of the landowner has to be managing that property and, and uh, you know, what's the long-term implication? So certainly, you know, whenever we can, we, we try to do things like that, but it's always a, a challenge. Um, you know, if we own a property, much easier to control and do exactly what is the best thing, you know, for maybe a stream that flows, yeah, into the Genesee, which, you know, is drinking water for someone down there. So, yeah, that's a great, uh, great point. Any other questions? I think if you hold the space bar or press the space bar, you'll, you'll unmute yourself or feel free to put them in the chat. Hearing none. Oh, uh, thank you, Ben, for your presentation. Uh, I'm gonna reshare my screen. Um, I want to thank Ben. Um, we have a specific uh, appreciation. Ben, I'll email this to you. You can print it, frame it, whatever you want on your desk. Uh, we truly thank you for bringing this subject to our attention. Uh, I know I learned a lot about the conservancy and the process. So thank you for that. Um, at the end of this meeting, I will convert the video um, over to uh, the YouTube channel. I'll send out an email to all the registrants with a survey. Uh, survey takes four or five minutes to fill out. 
um, the key is the committee would like feedback not only on this presentation, but also needs for future subjects. So you have something you would like to hear. Uh, there's a spot in the survey for a um, subject like that. I will put the recording of this presentation uh, again on YouTube, the Kinesis Lake channel, and I will send a link to that. So if you want, you can pass it on to other people, uh, farmers, etc., that might be in your contact. So with that, uh, don't forget, March 17th, if you want to be notified with, with the flyer, you can go to info, I-N-F-O, at kinesislake.org, sign up for our emails, and we don't send any propaganda or advertising. I use that vehicle to send out the fires to our 1,200 members. And we don't have to be a member to sign up for the email. With that, any last questions? For Ben. I'd just like to say that I'm um, very eager to see what the future holds. And I, I like to hear about the goals that the Conservancy has, um, the wish to work closely with our watershed partners. And um, I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mary, and thank you, Charlie, and everyone for having me uh, talking a little bit about who we are, what we do. Um, I think there's a lot more we can do in the Canisius Lake watershed, you know, very specific to water quality. I mean, it's the drinking water. I, I should have looked this up, but it's the drinking water for a lot of the towns and a lot of the people that live uh, here in Livingston County. So I think it's a really important thing to be doing that we might not think of mattering, you know, for the next year or two years, but thinking 50 years down the road, you know, what will, what will happen if the whole watershed is developed versus if we preserve it and put in place, you know, more protections, um, you know, how valuable that will be for, for us, for our kids, you know, for our grandkids. And that's really the, the scope that we need to be thinking and planning on. So very happy to, to be here and please do get in touch. Um, you know, give us a call, send us an email. If you have questions to follow up, uh, or you want to talk to me more about what we do, or if you just want to get on our, our newsletter list and, and you know hear about projects that we're working on, uh, very happy to, to continue the conversation with all of you. So, Thank you again, Ben, and uh, have a good night. Stay warm and out of the ice tonight. See you, everybody. Good night.